Hi guys, it's Coach Rick Storley here with a video on how to not screw up the sale. I'm going to give you three must-ask questions when you first meet with a prospect. Again, my name is Rick Storley and I help home builders and remodelers make more sales with less effort. I've developed a five-step system called Functional Sales and it's a combination of cutting edge internet marketing technologies and today's best sales strategies. So today we're going to take a closer look at the fourth step in my sales system, converting prospects into buyers. So this all begs the question, what should and shouldn't you do the first time you meet with a prospect? Well, we've all heard the term, buyers are liars. I've heard this and probably said it myself countless times in the housing industry. But why do new home and remodeling salespeople get blindsided from time to time in their sales process? So let's take a closer look at that. These are the five steps in my functional sales system. Now, if you'll notice the prospect to buyer conversion, it's about right in the middle. The best definition I've heard of closing is it's the natural conclusion to a dynamic sales process. So when a prospect falls off the face of the earth, and maybe they end up buying from one of your competitors, they're not necessarily liars. More often than not, there's a problem with your sales process, and it's probably something you did or didn't do at your first sit down meeting. So there's two learning outcomes from today's video. First, I'm going to give you three must ask questions that you may be missing when you first meet with a prospect. I'll tell you what they are and why you need to ask them. And then second, you'll discover how to shift the focus of your prospect from product and price to your process. You know, if you can do that, you're going to start closing a lot more deals. So let's get going. Now my last video on how to get more prospects to buy from you, I talked about positioning yourself as a trusted advisor with your prospects. Now think about the example of the doctor-patient relationship. When you go see your doctor, does your doctor give you a prescription right away or do they analyze your situation first? Well, of course they spend the better part of the exam analyzing your symptoms and building a new home or a major remodeling project is arguably as complex as surgery. And you have to be part psychotherapist to try to figure out the vision of your prospect's home while it's still in their head. But what I want you to focus on right now is the analysis you must perform at your first sit down with the prospect. So the first question that you need to be asking is how did you hear about us? Now you're going to ask this question for a couple of reasons. Now obviously you want to track your return on investment for your advertising. But the bigger reason is you want to find out if value for your company has been established. And the lead source your prospect used to find you is going to give you a great idea. Remember, after you get an answer that is anything other than they were referred to you, you want to follow up with, well, have you talked to anyone that has worked with us? Now, value as an equation equals price performance divided by quality perception. And if a prospect feels that your price is greater than what you're offering in return, they don't see value and they're not going to buy. But on the flip side, when they look at your package as more than more or equal to the price you're asking, value is established and the sale is made. Now this is a breakdown of lead source as it relates to sales over a one year period for two of my clients. The client referral and realtor leads, they were only 13% of the total leads, but they were 55% of sales. Now look at walk-in traffic. It was 70% of the leads. It was only 30% of sales. Even online leads closed at a 2 to 1 ratio over walk-in. Now why is this? Well, value was transferred from the clients and realtors to the new leads. And then online leads, they were, we were automatically following up with them and creating a nurturing program that established value and emotional trust before the salesperson ever met with them. Walk-in leads, however, they had no value established and they closed at a very low rate. So the next question you need to ask is, have you built or remodeled a home before? Now they can say one or two things. If they say yes, I would follow up with, well, why aren't you working with that builder again? And I would ask them, what was the criteria that you used to select that builder? Are you going to use that same criteria again? What was the design and selection experience like? You know, how did the construction phase go? Did the builder provide warranty after the sale? Now, how if they, what about if they say no? What are they looking for in a builder? What's most important in the relationship? What do they know or think they know about the building or remodeling process? Now you're going to go through these series of questions and you're normally going to find there are three hot buttons that will emerge. 
Now you're going to go through these series of questions and you normally find that there are three hot buttons that will emerge. Make sure you write them down and then after you know what's most important, always dynamically introduce your marketing message, positioning statement, and unique selling proposition. Now you do this in a dynamic fashion to make sure you touch upon all the discovered hot buttons. The third and final question is would they consider hiring you to build their home? So before you ever talk about prices, design, lots, or anything about the project, you need to figure out if you're a good fit to complete the project. Now assuming you are, would they consider hiring you based on your conversation from question number two? Now if they say yes, you pull out your process map or you're going to walk them through your steps to owning one of your homes or remodeling projects. If they say no, you just saved yourself a ton of wasted time and aggravation. At this point, you kindly refer them to your toughest competitor and you thank them for the opportunity. So let's recap. Referrals from clients and realtors are your best indication value has been established for your company. Sign calls, walk-ins, and any other cold lead source should be assumed there is no established value. So take the time to deliberately build value and trust before you get into product and pricing when you're dealing with a cold lead source. Most prospects you're going you're gonna to find they're going to have three hot buttons. You identify them and then you're going to position your unique selling proposition to address them. And before you ever talk about design, location, or pricing, find out if you're a good fit for one another. Once they confirm they consider using you as their builder, the focus has shifted to your process. Now you guide them towards picking you. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the top five mistakes builders make when presenting pricing. If you have questions or would like to learn more about my functional sales system using web marketing automation, just call or email me at the contact information on the screen. Or you can simply click on the button and schedule a date and time for me to call you. Happy selling.